such a privilege to be here and talk to you guys about heart disease. Um, I want to, I know this is a little bit of a serious topic, so I'll try to put a little bit of fun in heart disease with chocolate, which is the research that I do. So I have two hats at UCSD. I'm a clinician, I see patients, and I treat a lot of individuals and try to impact people on an individual level. And then the more fun aspect of my job is I get to do research. And uh, what I love about research is if you have some great findings, you can really impact people at a much broader level. So I'm gonna present both of those aspects of my, of my life, and I think you'll see how they merge by the time I get to the end of the presentation. This is actually a coronary angiogram from one of my patients, and let me tell you the story about how I met him. So this was a 45-year-old gentleman who on a nice Saturday afternoon like this was sailing on his boat with his wife and his two kids and just having a great Saturday afternoon like all of us are. And when he was on his boat, he started to feel a little bit nauseous. He started to feel uh, very sweaty. So being very smart, he came back on shore. And he uh, docks his boat at Seaport Village. So he came back onto Seaport Village um, area. And he basically collapsed and fell to the ground. And he was actually a very, very lucky guy because there happened to be a convention of cardiologists at that time. And there was a bunch of cardiologists around. And one of them just, this, I'm telling this is a completely true, true story. I'm not making anything up. And one of the cardiologists saw the gentleman as he collapsed and he ran immediately to him. The guy had lost his pulse, his, his heart had stopped beating. He immediately began CPR on this young 45 year old gentleman. And then he asked the paramedics to be summoned and asked somebody to go to the local hotel and get a defibrillator and basically defibrillated the sky and brought him back to life. And then within 10 minutes, uh, he was rushed to the emergency room at UCSD where I met him. And uh, we immediately diagnosed that he had a heart attack. Right here, there's a b blockage in the artery. And when I go to the next slide, you'll be able to see it but there's an artery that's basically cut off. The whole blood supply to that artery is cut off. And that's why he basically died and was resuscitated and brought back to life. So when I go to the next slide, you can see that we were able to basically open up that artery and uh, provide blood flow to the rest of the heart. It's a pretty big artery. And so a lot of my colleagues would say, this is great. This is the wonders of modern medicine. We can bring people back to life. We can put stents in them. and save their lives. And I actually am very sad about this case because I should have met this guy five years before he had his heart attack and said, you know, let's focus on prevention. Let's get you more active. What's your cholesterol? What's your blood pressure? So that he never ended up in this um, scenario. He actually did really well. He was in the hospital for a week and he didn't have any neurologic damage. He was unconscious for 10 seconds, I mean 10 minutes and there was continuous CPR. So despite all that, he's, he's doing really well. He he's, uh, went back to work. And when I looked back at his history, he was a very healthy guy. Like most of you that I see in the audience, he didn't have any medical problems. He never even felt like he had to see a doctor. But there were some clues. His father had a heart attack in his late 40s, and he did end up having very high cholesterol. So the one thing I do want to talk to everybody about is cholesterol. And before I do that, I just want to show you just a cartoon of what I showed in the actual patient about what a heart attack is. And basically, it's a blockage of your blood vessel with cholesterol. And that cholesterol loves to get the platelets, which are sticky things in your blood, and that will eventually close off the blood vessel, cut off supply to the rest of your heart, and heart muscle will die. And this is just another cartoon showing what cholesterol is. So there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. And most of you probably have heard about that. And just to make things simple, good cholesterol carries the bad cholesterol away. And then bad cholesterol is what actually sticks to the blood vessels and makes it easy for the platelets, which are the sticky things in your blood, come and accumulate there, eventually leading to a heart attack. And this is just another cartoon showing what happens when cholesterol accumulates in your blood vessel. So just in terms of what we can prevent, uh, simple things like just being more active, um, doing as rigorous physical exercise as you can, high blood pressure, diabetes, those are all things that everybody knows about that we can prevent. And of course, um, eating better so you can get better cholesterol. 
but there's a lot of things that you can't do. You, you can't change the family that you're born into, and you can't change the fact that you, we all age. And so these are things that are very um, important in terms of uh, your risk for heart attacks because there's plenty of people that I've seen that are extremely fit, that do everything right, and that still end up with a heart attack, and that's because of genetics. And as we do more and more research, we're understanding how the genetics are contributing to heart disease. And so just to kind of give you guys some numbers to remember um, is, is col to total cholesterol. The number that we aim for is less than 200. That's the guidelines that are, that are set in, um, by our various societies in Western medicine. And I want to get touch back on that point. And then the other cholesterol that we as cardiologists focus on is the bad cholesterol. And the reason we look at the bad cholesterol so carefully is because there's been study after study in hundreds and thousands of patients that shows that if you bring that bad cholesterol number down, that you will s substantially reduce somebody's risk of having a heart attack. So that patient that I told you about, his bad cholesterol was about 180. So he, that put him at a very high risk for having a heart attack. And so uh, I am very interested in non-Western medicine and how other cultures approach the same problems that we do. And so the, one of the things that's very interesting is if you look at more, more uh, primitive cultures like the pygmies, if you look at the, their cholesterol as a whole, it's about 100 points lower than our cholesterol. We in Western civilization, because of our diet, we eat very processed foods, high fructose corn syrup, our cholesterol on average is about 100 points higher. And as we get more and more insight to cholesterol, we're realizing the lower the better, and we really should be trying to have a cholesterol like the pygmies and other hunter-gatherer cultures. And so just to briefly touch on the treatment, there's a lot of things that we, we can fix with some of the mo uh, marvels of modern medicine. And one of those is treating cholesterol. I think statins are just a wonderful, wonderful group of drugs. And so there's a lot of natural things that you can do, like red yeast rice. Again, something that we've learned from the ancient Chinese. And then there's fish oil, which is also something that some of the more ancient cultures have been doing. Again, natural supplements that can be used to reduce cholesterol. So now I'm going to shift topics and go to my research. And to talk about my research involves, again, going back to more ancient cultures. You know, in science and medicine, we think that everything that we discover is new and exciting. But what we're actually doing a lot of times is rediscovering things that the old cultures already knew. And we, we were just too snobby and neglected them for a long time. And now through really good hardcore science, we're figuring out that these things are beneficial. So one of those things is uh, dark chocolate. And this is just a picture in the slide of the natural plant. And then, of course, we in Western society process everything, make things that are naturally good. We make them bad with our processing. So I just put a slide to show you the natural plant and then what we have in Western society, which is chocolate. And then in terms of um, how long the, this, the great effects of chocolate have been known, it goes back to the Aztecs and the, and the Mayans. If you look at some of their ancient writing, they talk about the wonders of, uh, of cacao. And when the Mayans and the Aztecs, when they were going to battle, they actually gave their warriors a drink that was very rich in cacao to give them more energy. So this is something that has been going on for ages, and we're, we're just starting to rediscover it. And how this happened that we discovered it, rediscovered it, is in the 1960s, there was a professor from Harvard who noted that there was a group of Indians living off the coast of Panama that really never had heart disease. They never had heart, heart attacks. They never had strokes. Their blood pressures were always good. So somehow, this group of Indians managed to defy all the diseases that afflict Western cultures. So he went to Panama, in this, in, to this island, and studied these Indians and looked at what, were they, what they were doing. They were, he looked very carefully at what they were eating, their lifestyle, and what he found is that they were actually drinking a beverage made from the cacao plant a couple times a day. And over years and years of research, he found that this beverage contains a compound called epicatechin. And what he found is that epicatechin is the active ingredient in the cacao that reduces blood pressure, that prevents heart attacks, and that prevents stroke. And so since that initial observation in the 1960s, 
a lot of researchers have looked into it, and you may have heard about some of the, some of these discoveries on the news because there's been a lot of recent discoveries about some of the benefits of dark chocolate. And so some of the things that we found is that it can um, decrease your bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol that I talked about. It can, um, it's anti-inflammatory. If you're diabetic, it can reduce your blood sugars. So there's just a lot of um, multiple, what we call pleiotropic effects of this compound. So what my colleagues and I at UCSD have done is we wanted to look at this compound in the setting of people who are having heart attacks, like that very first patient that I showed. Of course, with any research, you can't start with a human, you have to start with the animal first. And so we did a, a study where we took rats and we gave the rats a heart attack. And um, as the rats were having a heart attack, we gave them this compound in the dark chocolate. The white area is the area of the heart that's dying. And you can see in the animal that did not get the compound, there's a much bigger white area. And then in the animal that got the compound, there's a much smaller area. So we found that this compound in chocolate is very protective. And we're doing a lot more research studies. I have a clinical trial in process where I've given um, a, a dark chocolate that's very enriched with this compound to patients who have diabetes and who have heart failure. And very interestingly, like the um, Aztecs and the Mayans, all of these patients tell me that they have so much more energy. So, uh, so some of these patients are in their 60s and 70s, and they, they said, oh, I can walk a block before I started your study, and after I started your study, I can walk. So it's, in, it's just interesting when you go back to the history in modern day, how there's so many parallels. One of the problems with chocolate, as we all know, is it has calories. It has um, sugar, so it's really not an ideal way to administer something that's so beneficial. So one of the things that my colleagues and I are working on with all of our research is to eventually develop a pill that you can take, like you take an aspirin, to, to um, prevent the, the heart attack. And so going back to that original patient, if he had taken something like this, I might not have met him on that Saturday where we had to rush him to the, um, to the hospital and open up that blocked artery. I gave you some good um, insight into LDL cholesterol and all of you should take uh, a dark chocolate bar if you can. Thanks.